Our story begins on a warm, albeit overcast, late spring day in the city of Providence, Rhode Island. As a young 34-year-old single mother, Margaret Pryor, whose life had only become more complicated in recent times, walked toward the courthouse door with her six-year-old daughter's hand clutched tightly in hers. Margaret's heart was pounding as she felt her anxiety rising with every step she took towards that dreaded place. However, there was something capable of making her overcome all that and leave any fear behind. The love she felt for her six-year-old daughter, Beatrice. She was the only thing she had in the world since her husband decided to abandon them both without any explanation. He didn't even bother to collect his clothes from the drawers. Mr. Pryor went away and left everything just as it was, as if he had never left, and that made it even harder. One day, he decided that life wasn't what he was looking for. That was that. But as if becoming a single mother of a child was a little misfortune, things for Margaret only got worse when doctors diagnosed her daughter with type 1 diabetes. Lifetime medication, Mrs. Pryor, your daughter will need constant care and will have to be very watchful of what she eats and how much exercise she gets. She won't be able to be like other children. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those were the doctor's words as he gave her the final diagnosis. The doctor's words hit Mrs. Pryor like a knife. How would she manage to bring up a child who needed lifelong medication and medical care? They barely made ends meet under normal circumstances, and now she had to add chronic illness to the long list of things she had to take care of single-handedly. It was hard, but she did it. Margaret didn't quite know how, but she managed to raise her daughter and herself with hardly any resources and at the cost of her physical and mental health, which she did not regret at all because the welfare of her little girl was all she wanted. Seeing Beatrice smile and knowing that she was healthy and growing strong was the best reward for an exhausted mother who never stopped sacrificing for the one she loved the most. That's why she was so frustrated now. She was walking to a courthouse holding her daughter's hand. A child should never step foot in a place like this. I'm irresponsible, Margaret thought as they crossed the threshold of the front door. At first glance, her court appearance was not serious. It was for a parking violation and the fine was only $100. But to her, who counted every dollar she earned, it was a minor fortune, enough to seriously worry her and make her see the future in black. What Margaret didn't know, and it was impossible for her to know, because no one would have believed it if she hadn't seen it with her own eyes, was that her luck was about to change and that it would do so in the most unexpected way possible. Mother and daughter nervously entered the already crowded courtroom. Apparently, they were running late. The mother scrutinized the faces of the audience and the court officials. In their eyes, there was a mixture of pity and compassion that Margaret interpreted as a sign of good luck. And surely it was, though not in the way she imagined. Beatrice, her precious daughter, was oblivious to the gravity of the situation she was experiencing. She looked around the room with wide eyes, having no idea of the impact that day could have on her life forever. She held her mother's hand tightly and felt her mother's hand tremble. Beatrice was too young to understand the magnitude of the emotions her mother felt, but no child is oblivious to his or her mother's grief. And Beatrice knew somehow that her mother was suffering and that she needed her by her side, whatever happened in that crowded room of prying eyes. They sat where they were directed in silence. Mrs. Pryor sat next to her daughter, head down, eyes closed. She was rehearsing her plea and clinging to a shred of hope, the hope that her circumstances would sway the ruling in her favor. May everything go well, please. May everything go well, please, please, please she repeated in whispers. As they waited, Margaret couldn't help going over and over what had led her to this situation, trying to find some detail that would help her in her defense and free her from having to pay the fine that the court would demand. On the day of the incident, she had made a quick stop to pick up medication for her daughter. Every two weeks, she has to go to the pharmacy to buy her pills, and she had never forgotten. 
but we all make mistakes. And that day, Margaret Pryor, for the first time in a very long time, got lost and made a mistake. She had jumped a curb with the intention of running into the pharmacy, picking up the packet of medication and running back to the car without anyone noticing her infraction. Unfortunately, when she returned, there was already a fine and she was once again on the verge of poverty. Suddenly, a deep voice brought her out of her reverie and the mother stepped forward. The judge invited her to state her case. Margaret spoke in a firm voice, but the tension she felt was unmistakable. The mother explained the circumstances leading up to the parking violation as transparently and honestly as she could. Your Honor, it was a mistake. I have never committed any traffic violation. This was the first time, and it will be the last, I promise you," she nervously explained. She recounted to those present the events of the day and how urgent her daughter Beatrice's medication was. She also insisted that that day, she had just finished her shift at the first of her three daily jobs and had only a few minutes to do a lot of things, among which buying Beatrice's medication was a priority. Judge Frank Caprio, popularly known for his benevolent nature, listened attentively to the mother's story, as always. His eyes shifted from time to time from the mother to Janice and back again. He sensed the mother's problems and respected the way she approached them. He also recognized the balance she was desperately trying to maintain between her work life and her duties as a single mother. When Margaret finished her argument, there was an uncomfortable silence that filled the entire courtroom for several minutes. Judge Caprio looked from the mother to Beatrice and back to the mother. Then, with a twinkle in his eye, Judge Caprio turned his full attention to the little girl. He smiled at her, and she smiled back shyly. This man, whom everyone feared and repulsed in equal parts, was about to do something that would change everything and leave them all speechless. Beatrice, would you like to come up here and help me stir this thing up? It seems to me that I need someone younger's point of view. I'm starting to get older, he said sweetly and smiling at her. His voice was warm, like a grandfather talking to his favorite granddaughter. The courtroom was used to the usual routine of court proceedings, always tense and sometimes boring. But what had just happened broke all the schemes and made everyone turn in surprise to look at the girl. The expectation was enormous. The girl first hesitated. She was intimidated by all the eyes that at that moment were looking at her. But she was also curious about what was going to happen and was very attracted by the dais and the authority it imposed on her. Beatrice first looked to her mother for approval, and after receiving a slight nod, she slowly made her way to the dais. Judge Caprio gave her a small stool so that she could sit down and look her in the eye. Once the girl was settled, he turned to her and asked her again in the same tone, How was your day, little one? His soft voice invited the little girl to trust him. She smiled slightly and said, Fine, sir. Thank you for asking. I'd like to be somewhere else, though, certainly. My mom isn't happy here. I'd like to take her out for ice cream. That always makes her smile and puts her in a good mood. Caprio laughed at the girl's sincere response. The whole room imitated him. Then, trying to regain his seriousness but without changing his sweet and protective attitude towards the child, he explained that there was a small problem with a parking ticket from her mother. He explained the circumstances in terms she could understand. No legal jargon or anything a six-year-old could not understand. And with all eyes in the room fixed on the little girl, he told her that he had to help her make a decision. First, he told her that they could have her mother pay the entire fine. The second option was for her to pay only a portion. Or, if she had any ideas, he told Beatrice that they could do something else as well. What do you say, Beatrice? What do you think would be the fairest thing to do? He asked. The usual formality surrounding a court proceeding disappeared from the courtroom, and now everyone watched Judge Caprio's tender interaction with the girl. Beatrice frowned. The weight of the entire decision rested on her young shoulders, and she seemed to realize it, but she felt no fear. 
After much thought, she turned to Judge Caprio and gave him an answer. I think the fair thing to do would be for her to only have to pay $50, sir. She broke the rules, but she had no intention of doing so. It was justified, and it was only five minutes. It seems to me that reducing the fine by half is the fairest thing to do in this case, the girl replied emphatically. When the girl spoke again, her voice was clear and confident. She had made a fair and thoughtful decision that greatly impressed Judge Caprio and the others in the courtroom. A murmur of laughter rippled through the room as they heard her speak in this manner. Everyone nodded respectfully at the young woman's fair judgment and agreed with her verdict, although the judge always has the last word. After listening carefully to the girl and analyzing the reaction of all his colleagues, Judge Caprio smiled with his eyes. He nodded gravely and accepted Beatrice's decision with a nod of his head. He then told her that he believed she had been as fair as he would have been and extended a hand to close the deal and end the problem. She smiled at the compliment and shook his hand gently. But the surprises were not over. Judge Caprio was still well aware of the mother's plight, and being the man that he was, he wanted to help her a little more with the matter of the fine. He wished to ease her burden and, at the same time, show Beatrice that the law was something to be respected, not feared. So he leaned forward and did something that took the breath away from the girl's mother and everyone else watching him holding their breath, giving Beatrice an unexpected new option. There is one more option, a less usual but much fairer one that I'm sure you and your mother will love, he said. Tell me, Beatrice, are you hungry? Have you eaten anything today? The judge asked in a nonchalant tone, as if he were talking to a friend he has known for a long time. It caught everyone present by surprise. The judge was taking a tactic that no one could have predicted, except Beatrice, apparently. That was the most natural question in the world for a child her age. The judge was right. She was hungry, and no, she hadn't eaten yet. And so she told Judge Caprio, the truth is that I am very hungry. Mom didn't eat anything before she came here and I didn't have an appetite either. I just want this to be over so we can go get something to eat. Anything. A hamburger and fries, maybe. That would be great, sir, Beatrice said honestly. All right, said the judge. What if I told you I'd withdraw the fine entirely if your mother would commit to just one thing? Beatrice wasn't sure what was going on, but her mother breathed a sigh of relief when she heard him say that. Then the little girl asked the judge what this commitment he was talking about was. If your mother agrees to take you to your favorite place for breakfast, I will cancel the fine immediately, said the judge, smiling. Beatrice made a face of not understanding what was happening. She looked at her mother and then back at Judge Caprio. Then she nodded slowly and said, Okay, I accept. Mommy, let's eat, said the little girl enthusiastically, looking at her mother with a big smile. By then, those present in the courtroom did not know whether to smile or cry. Everyone was delighted with Judge Caprio's proposal, and at the same time, amazed at how fairly he was applying the law. After all, the law is there to protect people, not to harm them. The judge's empathy and kindness had touched everyone in the courtroom. Judge Caprio nodded solemnly to the girl and added, I think you've made a wise choice, Beatrice, he said. You have shown us how important kindness and understanding are. Justice is based on those two concepts, and its mission is to see to the welfare of all, even those who are in the wrong. Now you need to get out of here quickly. I think there's a hamburger and fries waiting for you. And with a light knock on the wood, he ended the session. Probably the most unusual and surprising trial ever seen, and one that all present there would never forget. The judge's words and example were a powerful lesson for all present. Caprio demonstrated that there was something profoundly moral about the place of compassion in the judicial system. When the court adjourned, Margaret and her daughter walked out holding hands with big smiles on their lips. They had won and were not only putting the legal dispute behind them, they were going home with an important life lesson. Did you like this touching and surprising story? If so, we invite you to leave us a comment expressing your opinion.
If you want to continue enjoying inspiring stories like this one, subscribe to our channel or check out the other videos shown at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your cooperation.